times. Is this really, uh, is there nothing else in the chart that might counteract it? Is there no other way that we could present this to the person? Or do we know a way, for example, that they can counteract this reading? If they change their diet, if they get proper exercise, if they adopt uh, certain prayers like Vishnu Sahasranam. Vishnu Sahasranam, I have personal experience, will counteract any health problem. So uh, when we give a negative reading, we should also give an antidote, a way that they can change their life to avoid the consequences of that karma. That means we have to know spiritual life. Okay, a Jyotishi should always be a Brahmana first and an astrologer second. This is very important. Otherwise, we can't give the advice that people need to avoid the problems in their chart. And um, finally, uh, people will come to us and they'll ask us, how can I get rich? Or, you know, how can I get a better job? How can I uh, basically improve my material situation? Uh, so we should always advise them that, yes, there are ways to improve your material situation, but they have to be based on right livelihood, on right actions, on ethics, on spiritual values. Otherwise, they will simply entangle us more and more in material life. Uh, I would say out of the questions I receive as an astrologer, more than half are about money. And in this world, money has become a very powerful force. But we should not get caught in the same trap that other people are in. We're astrologers. We're supposed to have knowledge. And knowledge means that we know that material things are only temporary, and you can't take them with you when you leave this life. Therefore, when we give readings to people, we should always temper them, whether they're positive or negative. Uh, like when a person has a lot of Raja Yogas and you, you can see that they're going to get uh, material benefits in this life. When they have a Rishta Banga and you can see that they're released from most of the negative readings in the chart. Um, you have to give those with a grain of salt. Just like when you give a negative reading, you have to give the antidote to the negative situation. When you give a positive reading, you also have to temper it with the knowledge that material gain is only temporary. Spiritual gain is eternal. So we should apply these favorable circumstances in our chart to making real spiritual progress. And then we're really making the right use of the advantages that we have in this life. Okay, so now I'm going to ask for questions on the different ethical principles of an astrologer. By the way, Guadalupe is here. Show the camera, move the camera, show Guadalupe. Mataji. It's very good to have you with us. I'm, sure, I'm glad you could come. No questions? Omar says Hare Krishna. We met Omar and Guadalupe at the same meeting. So should we answer questions about money at all from when they come from poorly developed people? Well, yeah, uh, we have to because poorly or uh, spiritually undeveloped people, most of their questions are going to be about money uh, and other material things. The trick is, and here's, this is what really separates the expert astrologer from the person who's just playing around with it. When someone asks a question like that, we use the question to lead them back to a spiritual understanding. Uh, there's no question that is forbidden. There's no subject. For example, my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, even though he was a, a celibate Swami and had no interest in family life, uh, if someone asked him a question about family life or uh, you know, how to raise children or how to deal with different situations in the family, 
He never tried to avoid the question. He would always answer the question to the best of his ability, but then he would also lead it back to spiritual advancement, spiritual life, uh, and how to really make the best uh, out of this uh, bad bargain of material existence. So let's say somebody asks, how can I get a better job? Uh, well, we look at their chart and we can see that they're not very fortunate. They have some bad karma maybe from a previous life and that's manifesting as problems on their, with their job. So basically, we should try to engage them in pious activities, chanting the name of God, uh, giving charity to uh, qualified people, uh, spiritually advanced people to help with the mission of spreading God consciousness, uh, or even maybe uh, volunteering their time for spiritual purposes or something like that, or feeding people or, you know, uh, digging wells in, in the desert or, you know, something valuable that they can invest their time and resources in that will give them some pious results in the mode of goodness. That's the trick. Why is a person spiritually unqualified or why are they having uh, financial difficulties? It means they have performed activities in the mode of ignorance and passion in the past. And so now they're getting karma. That means their uh, financial benefits are withheld or something like that. So how do we help them? We engage them in activities that will give them good karma, right? Pious activities, charitable activities, maybe uh, helping with uh, opening hospitals in poor countries or something. If they can't understand spiritual life, maybe they can do some charity or something like that, and that will help them. Another question? It says, wouldn't it be better to give them a better perspective right from the start? When we first show them how to gratify their senses, they will not be prone to spiritual life, I could imagine. Hmm. Some people aren't ready for spiritual life. If they're not ready, what can you do? You can engage them in the highest thing that they can conceive. You know, well, what else can you do? If you try to engage them at too high a level, they won't be able to accept it. And then they might reject your advice altogether. Would it be proper to ask about marriage if I know my fiancé and I have moksha karma? Sure, why not? Two liberated souls getting married? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best kind of marriage. If if you really have to get married. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm married to my lion, what can I tell you? Is it true that Vedic astrology focuses on how to engage material things for spiritual life? Yes, the whole Vedic philosophy is like that. The whole Vedic philosophy is that here we find ourselves stuck in this material world. Now, how do we make the best out of that situation? Srila Prabhupada used to say, we have to make the best of a bad bargain. You know, if you buy 10 cases of, uh, of fruit for your restaurant and half of it is going bad, then maybe you make jam. <laughs> huh? Yeah, or make a drink or something out of it uh, because you have to use it right away. It's a bad bargain. You got cheated. But, okay, make the best deal at that that you can. Okay, so let's go on to the next section. 